important place to start is somewhere that has real value. It has to be somewhere that is um, comfortable for the IT department to, fit, to, to work with as well because I think you know more often than not the, the IT department in a large organization will have very valid concerns about introducing AI for the first time. Um, and I think, you know, just like a, a business owner needs to be reassured that it's going to be commercially viable, the IT department needs to be reassured that it's safe and secure and, and, and it's transparent in terms of the data. So I think there's a lot of good examples in, in CRM systems. I think, um, you know, if you look at the work that, for example, Salesforce is doing, they have, they have a lot of work they're doing with their, their Salesforce Copilot, which everybody seems to call everything Copilot these days. But, but it's an interesting, I think that's a particularly interesting one, and kind of similar to Microsoft, which is there are tools that are embedded in an organization, whether that's Salesforce or Microsoft Word or, or whatever, um, and, and also in the cloud, in, in Gmail and so on, and those tools are gently having AI added to them. So as an organization, you can choose to adopt that feature and see how that feature works. And that's all done in a very, very kind of, um, a very simple way to, to augment. Um, I mean, there are, there are more or less cost effective of ways of doing that. I think there are other areas as well. Um, one, of the, one of the most interesting ones, I think, is looking at, at tools like Midjourney and Runway for video and, and um, image creation as well, because I think those allow you to reach into other departments within the organization. So, you know, we, we use it a little bit, not, not to actually create the finished assets, but our designers work with it to be able to kind of get inspiration and kind of look at alternative ways of doing things. And I think that... That is an interesting area as well. Um, I think where you've got um, very simple tools to capture meeting transcripts and so on to be able to, and, and, and the really interesting thing about that is um, quite often with these tools, you get the transcript, which is useful, but that's been around quite a long time. But also there are analytics done on those at the end. So they create action points. That's a really good thing. They also tell you the percentage of who's spoken in a meeting at any one point, which is often very interesting. I've decided not to speak in many meetings now as a result of that. But I think those sorts of things are quite, are quite interesting to see um, what's what. There are also tools that can do analysis of people's body language in meetings as well um, and draw some conclusions from those. And those are all things that I think are they're, they're small projects that can be built in, but they're not going to totally shake the, um, the, the business. And, and just going back to Salesforce or, or Microsoft, you know, those tools are designed very specifically to augment what you're doing. Um, and they are hugely beneficial and they're easy to implement. But as with all big organizational changes like that, when you make a change, you're kind of making that change. You're, you're in that boat and it's, uh, you're committed at that point as well.